It's time to make some money. What's going on, Tenant Crew? My name is Billy the Squid, and we are back with part three of our no hit, no death run guide for Bloodborne. And as you can see, we uh, finally hit the soft cap of uh, 25 strength on our last run, beat the Blood Star Beast. But today, we need to go through Cathedral Ward, we need to go through the Hunter's Workshop, and we also need to slay. The Scream Beast herself, Vicar Amelia. But to do that, we need more money. So, let's go do that, shall we? Um, if you have been following the series, you are already up to aware around where we are uh, level-wise. Uh, if you follow, followed all the steps, you should at least be this level. If you went back and grinded some, that could put you a little bit higher. But, as of right now, this is where we be. And we're going to head back to Cathedral Ward, because now that the Blood Star Beast is dead, a new door opens! The door is to the Hunter's Workshop realm. So heading on up here, we are not actually going to ascend the, uh, the workshop. We are just simply going to go through here and get the items that we need for upgrades, that being souls and a uh, few twin shards. So, just run past those guys, they won't be able to shoot you if you just sprint across the bridge. Kill this guy, he may drop stuff, he may not, no big deal either way. And then going around this corner, there's going to be a scuttle beast. Go ahead and walk up and just waylay into him. And that will give us two twinny twin twins. Not enough to do anything. Whenever you drop down here, there's, see that uh, little stone piece that's sticking out there? If you hit that, you will kind of jettison yourself to this edge. And I've never fallen off, but it scared the hell out of me multiple times. So just something to be aware. And then we are going to come over this way, line up with the ropes, and just lightly walk your ass off. You'll be able to survive the fall. You should also be able to survive this fall, but if you are a chicken shit like your boy, Pop a blood vial and then come through. And this goes into a little secret area, not real secret. Most people know what this is and where this is. But uh, it is the abandoned old workshop. And this is where we are going to get the stuff to fuel our fires, to satiate our beastly bloodlusts. So go over here, grab the doll set. Very important. Out of everything here, it is the most important thing to grab. You can get the old hunter's bone as well third of umbilical cord, and the small hair ornament. That being done, we're going back to the dream. Now that we are back in dreamland, come up to the inside bath real quick. If you have not already purchased the Gascoigne Garbs, go ahead and buy that. Then we are going to hop on down Shmia, and we are going to go to our clothing section. And all of that good, good doll clothing we got, we are going to sell. It sells for a ridiculous amount. So that is going to be the fuel for our fire, per se. You can also go and sell the old hunter's bone. It sells for 1k, not too shabby. Then go find your doll. This is an optional thing that you can do if you're wanting just a little bit more chance of survivability. Um, is to get the tear stone. Go ahead and smash that to bits. And this is going to go into your gun slot if you have the shards to level up your pistol. If you don't have them now, you will after Vicar Amelia. It is completely optional, but what it does is it gives you a slight bit of health regen. So, Welcome. not uh, super important, but no reason not to if you have the stuff. So, all these points are going to go into skill. Leveling us up to a nice, healthy 18 skill. Skill is important in this game because oh, it, uh, it affects what our visceral attacks are going to do. And with this next fight, this is going to be the first fight that we actually make use of those. Also, feel free to burn any of your insights uh, items, the one third umbilical cord and the madman's knowledge. Grab yourself a few beast blood cocktails. They're never bad to have on you. And we are going to go back. Uh, we are going to take the gravestone back to the old hunter's workshop. And we are going to follow out and head towards Vicar Amelia. So just double your ass back the way ye came. 
And then once you get out to the workshop, you're just going to do a few more drop puzzles. None of these drop puzzles are particularly difficult. There's significantly more difficult to drop puzzles in the other Souls games, but just kind of be careful where you're aiming. Some of these boards can kind of trip you up and uh, knock you around. The hardest part of this is you're going to do a sprint and then a jump to the left, try to land on this guy here, and then you can just jump straight down from here. If you jump down at this angle, this beastie boy here will not aggro until you're all the way up at the door. And he's got to go through an animation before he can actually do anything to you, and by the time he's done with that, you're gone! Around this corner, you got some crows. Transformed R2 is just for safety. You can grab this stuff. It doesn't sell for a lot, but souls are souls. There's gonna be a dog up here. Just skirt around him. He may attack you, he may not. And then right up the elevator we go. And he'll end up falling into the hole and you'll be getting his souls anyway. Most likely. It does not appear he actually tracked onto us that good this time, so we didn't get that, but that's okay. Don't do what I just did. That is, uh... That is Cold Blood Dew up there. I forget that almost every single time. That's a plus six Cold Blood Dew. Definitely want to get that. I'm not going to uh, show you guys me going back for that, but I will be going back for that. And then come up here and get the Numbing Mist. We won't be using it on Vicar Amelia because uh, she won't get the chance, but it's another thing that you can sell. Most important thing, don't forget to pull the lever Kronk. That will unlock the area down there. And I'm going to go get that Cold Blood Dew, and I will meet you guys back Shmia. Things to note if you do end up missing that. If you jump down here, this door is already going to be open, but all the enemies will be respawned. So whenever you come back into this alley, you will have to deal with the birds, and you will also have to deal with the dog. Now, the dog would typically not be an issue if we didn't have to wait for the ladder, so we actually need to aggro the dog over and kill it outright this time. And then we can just go over here, pull the lever for the elevator, and just kind of wait in this corner. The guys coming down the alley won't be able to see you, so just wanted to give you guys a little safety tip in case you were a dingus like I am and forget the big box. At this point in the run, you can either go back and get a few more levels, or you can go straight up to Vicar Amelia. For consistency's sake, I will be taking us down to level up. Just wanted to give you guys a heads up that that is what we would be doing. So, meet you back at the Hunter's Dream. Just wide berth everything in this area. Nothing should be able to smack you, and then we'll be running back up the same path that we came down. Go ahead and pop your dew. Go over and sell your Numbing Mist. Like I said, they sell for quite a bit, and that was uh, 2,400 for that stack of Numbing Mist. We won't be needing them. And you can come over here and put whatever points you have into skill. We got one level up off of it. Like I said, not super needing to go back and do this, but I just wanted to show you for consistency's sake so that we're all on the same page going into Vicar Amelia. So we are rocking 25 strength and 19 skill going into this fight. Should be more than enough to do the strat that is required to get this fight done quick and easy. I meant to go to Cathedral Ward. I will meet you guys at Cathedral Ward. All right, back at Cathedral Ward, we are going to make the run up. Like I said, there will be these guys here just wide berth them. There's a crow there that can hit you, but he takes a little while to get actually moved around. Watch your stamina as you're running past. These guys most likely will point at you, and then straight up these stairs. Shmia. Come on over here. There's another Cold Blood Dew. Grab that, and then we are going to make the dead sprint. Scythe Boy won't hit you. Biggest threat is this giant boy. If he gives you good RNG, you'll just be able to run past him like that. If he does the sweep, you might have to dodge. Go hard right on that guy. He is kind of an asshole and has the potential to smack you. He also has the potential to smack you as you're opening this door, so just be aware of that. And we are here for the fight. Um... Whenever you're running up that stair, kind of, whenever you're heading hard right, slow down so that you'll be able to dodge roll instead of doing the jump animation. Jump animation doesn't give you any iframes, the roll does, so. That guy's kind of a dick, but we are good. So, 
as you can see here, all we need are B-split pellets and our fire paper. So if you look into the arena here, you are safe to walk up, up until the second square. So we are going to go ahead and do that. Pop the beast blood pellet, the fire paper, and we are going to go in. As you can see there, the second square triggered the fight. Now the first thing we're going to do is run up to our right, her left, and as she screams, her arm will come down. We are going to do two transformed attacks into that, and then we are going to cycle to the back left leg, our side, do transformed until that breaks, go to the other leg, transform until it breaks, and then go to her head for a visceral. At that point, we will R1 her head until she staggers, do a few damage. Once she is done with that, she will do a back step. We're going to move away from that, and then we'll just go in for the other half of that. So, I've said it. Let's put it into practice. As I said, walk right up here. Arm comes down. One, two. Broken arm. Transform that. Go ahead and do the third. Transform, come over here, do the same thing. Then lock on and do your visceral. Big damage coming in hot. R1 her face until she screams like that. Then she'll backstep. She will scream again. And then just R1 her to death. If you go back to any of those legs, it will stagger her backwards so she won't actually be able to hit you. And then you can just keep waylaying into her. And that is how you one cycle Vicar Amelia. Come up here, watch the cutscene, get the password, and then we will be heading back to the Hunter's Dream just to uh, consolidate our base because I like to leave us and start us at the Hunter's Dream for each of these videos just so we're on the same page levels wise and equipment wise. There is one thing we are going to do a little bit different going into this. We are going to come first and foremost over to the merchant's bath, and we are going to buy some throwing knives. We are going to buy approximately eight of them. Um, that is what we will need for something in the next video, but just, it is very important. Don't forget to buy the throwing knives first and foremost. Go ahead and pop any do that you have if you went back and used the one thing uh you won't have it if you didn't you'll have two do other than that everything else is good we don't have enough shards to level the weapon just run up here i'll show you guys that we need one more shard for that we're not going to be using her golden pendant so don't worry uh if you do want to level your pistol and insert the tier um, the bath now sells the bloodstone shards that is available. If you haven't already, you can also go back to old Yarnum to farm them. And then we will be leveling up. This will put us up to 21 skill and 25 strength. Thank you very much, Tenacru. Hopefully you all found this video helpful. If you did, don't forget to like and let me know in the comments below how this video has been affecting your runs. Much love, and I will see you in the next video going through the forest. Bye-bye.